Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy, and in today's tutorial video, I'm going to be going over how to make a tool cause damage. Now, this sort of system almost works like a bit of a sword. Now, it is a very basic concept on how a sword works. We're just going to be making it when the part detects a humanoid in the script, it will then go and remove a specific amount of damage from that single player. So, let's say we had to go and touch the player with a sword part that we are using. Keep in mind, this sword is without any animations or any additional scripts. So how the system is going to work, for example, there's going to be two players. So we're going to have player one and also player two. Player one is the player that has the sword. Player two is the innocent, for example, civilian. Um, but player one is the one with that tool, which is going to have, uh, which is actually going to be causing damage to player two. So how it works is when the part or when a specific part on side of that tool or sword detects a humanoid, then it is going to cause damage to that humanoid. So, for example, let's say player one has now got the sword out and a specific part of their tool touches another humanoid, which is inside of a player, then that player or that humanoid is going to lose health. So for starters, we want to make sure our exploring properties are enabled. If our exploring properties are not enabled, click on the top bar here, click on view and enable exploring properties and they should show up somewhere over your screen. Now we have a much more in-depth tutorial on how to make a sword. I previously did one of those, so you can either go down to the description of this video, go find the first link there, which goes over how to, to develop your own sword. But I'm just going to be going over it very quickly here, simply because I've covered that in a previous video. So if you still need to make your sword, please go and watch that video before you come and watch this one um, before you go and obviously make your sword do deal damage so go and watch that one if you haven't already but I'm just going to quickly go and make our sword here so this is going to be the main handle part this is going to be for, for this tutorial I'm actually going to be using our tool as like a bit of a, a sword I guess you could say um, I mean you can use whatever sort of tool you want it's really it's 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 I'm just going to do a real basic design here because it doesn't matter too much so that is going to be the main handle part duplicate that up there we'll move that there and now this can be kind of like our, I guess, spear or whatever you really wanted to call it. Maybe a blade. There we go. That can be our blade. So this is going to be the part that is going to be dealing the damage. So let me quickly go ahead and insert a handle here. And as mentioned before, if you have already not got your tool, please go and watch that video before to know how to make your tool and make it more make it work correctly. Uh, if you are wanting a more detailed explanation, but if you can follow along with what I'm doing here, you can also do it that way. So I'm going to quickly go and rename the main part here to handle. So this is where the player is going to be holding. So now we want to click on the plus button workspace, insert a tool. Inside that tool, we can go rename it. But I'm just going to go and grab all these parts here, change the parent into that tool. Then inside of our handle, weld constraint, just like that. Uh, we'll go and put part zero as being the handle and then part one there. Duplicate that three times, just like that. And that goes there. And that one goes there, so now we've got all our well constraints assigned to a specific part. So now we've got our main tool working. So now that you've gone and created your tool, you now want to go over to the part which is actually going to be dealing the damage. So, for example, our tool here is a sword. So obviously this is the main handle, this is the weird little separator thing here in the middle, and then this is going to be our main blade. So we want to go and find our main blade part, which is right here, this one right here. So this is it. when a player or another player is... Uh, touched by this part here, then they're going to lose health. So we want to go and click on the plus button here next to our part. Now keep in mind, obviously, whatever your part is that is going to be dealing the health, you go and select that and you follow these instructions. Click on the plus button here next to your part and insert a script. So now that you've inserted the script inside of your part, which is going to be dealing the damage, you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that's in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. So now that you've inserted the code inside of the script inside of your part that is going to be dealing damage, there's a couple things that we can adjust. Now obviously you go and adjust these to however you want your system to work or however you want your, your part to work here. But uh, we're just going to be going over the main th two things here. This is going to be the local wait time and also the damage. Now the wait time is basically how long until the player can get hurt again. Now what I mean by this is Usually, if you didn't have this debounce or you didn't have this wait time, what would be happening is every single time it detects a humanoid, then the player is going to be hurt. But now with this debounce and with this wait time, this kind of limits on how often the player can get hurt. So on default, I've got it to set to 0.5. So only every half a second can the player get hurt. And for this example, the player will only be getting damaged 10 health each time. So every 0.5 seconds, they can only get 10, 10 damage 
done. I mean, obviously you can go and change this to your preference. If you don't want, if you just want it to be instant, you know, so, so, so bad luck for you, then you're going to do maybe 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 to make it pretty much instant. Um, it, it, well, you can go and change it to whatever you want. We're going to be keeping it at 0 0.5 just to, so you can have a little bit of a better idea on what I actually mean when we go and test out the system. So here on line three, this basically controls on how much damage is actually removed from the player's health each time they hit with that specific part. So on, on default here, we've got it to 10. So every 0 0.5 seconds, the player can lose 10 health. Now, if you wanted it to be an instant kill, you could do 100 or even 110, because what can tend to happen if you had a, have it at 100, so when a player touches the specific part, then they lose 100 health. What can happen is when they go and lose the 100 health, what can occasionally happen, very seldom, is the because their Roblox automatically has a regeneration system of health, obviously, let's say the player loses 100 damage, the Roblox could actually go and add that additional... Um, health onto the player before they've actually gone and even fully died. So realistically, if you wanted it to be a one shot kind of or a one hit kind of kill, you'd set this to 110 to assure that Roblox can't add enough health in time until the player has fully died and reset. So that's what I would say if you're wanting for a one shot kill, but we're just going to be keeping it as a, playing lo a player losing 10 damage every 0.5 seconds. Now obviously you go and change these to whatever you like and whatever you feel would be best. So I'm just going to quickly go over the code here. So local debounce, basically what this means is it is basically the, the limiter on how often the player can get hit here. So what what what? Oh, it, it will make more sense here in a second. But so local debound equals false. Local wait time. We just went over that. And local damage that determines on the damage. So what here happens here on line four? It goes script dot parent dot touched. It then creates a function which is called hit. So here on line six, it basically identifies on what our humanoid is. Now our human humanoid is the thing that we're actually going to be adjusting the damage from. Humanoid is what you can adjust your health with, your walk speed, your jump power. You can adjust adjust a lot of things with your humanoid. So we're identifying that here. And so basically it goes local humanoid equals hit.parent and hit.parent find first child of class humanoid. Basically meaning our humanoid is hit.parent and as well as hit.parent find first child of class humanoid. Basically meaning that is our humanoid. It is now making it look for the humanoid inside of our character, which is from the hit dot the parent. So the hit, whatever caused the hit to the parent, then it finds the humanoid there. So then here on line eight, it goes if humanoid and not debounce then. So if there's a humanoid and not debounce, so the debounce is false, basically meaning and not debounce false, then debounce equals true. And then the humanoid is going to take the damage, which is basically a, another event, which is like a, like a, a takes damage event. And then it takes a certain amount of damage, which is going to be our damage up there that we are adjusting. Now you don't necessarily need to have the local damage. You, it's just more organized and you're able to easily change it but uh if you really wanted to you can remove the local damage and you just go and put your number that you want in there but i mean it's, it, it does the exact same thing there's really no point but it, it's, it's an easier way to keep it controlled and you can easily manage it from there then it goes and waits the wait time which is our 0 0.5 and then the debounce equals false basic basically meaning now okay we are ready to do it again because the wait time it has been so it's going to go take the damage then it's going to wait 0 0.5 seconds then it's going to set the debounce to false so then if humanoid and not debounce equals or, or the debounce that is false then it is going to make the debounce true again which is going to then allow the player to do it again so it's a constant loop of all these different things which eventually make the player lose damage. So once you've gone and adjust everything to your preference, you want to head up here, click on the X button next to your script. So once you've finished adjusting your script and you've closed your script and everything's saved, you want to head over to your main tool here. You want to go to the parent of your tool and then we want to select it and put it in the starter pack. Now basically what this does, this gives it to us straight away. So when we join into the game, we don't even have to do anything. It is given us given to us straight away. Now obviously, depending on how you want the player to receive the tool, that's completely up to you. But now, when we go and join in, we'll be given the tool straight away. So to make sure that this does work, what we can do is head over here to the top bar here where it says test, and because we need two players to test this out. You can either get a friend, or if you're just alone and you just wanna you know, easily test it out, you can also do it this way. So make sure it's a local server, and also on two players, because that's what we need, minimum of two players. And now we go and click start. So now this is gonna open up two separate windows, which is gonna be called player one and player two, which we're able to go and then test out our sword, which is gonna be dealing the damage. So as you guys can see, we're now here in the base plate and I've got player one, I'm player two. 
player one or player two also does have the sword here so it, it, it is in everyone's character um, but if, for this tutorial we're going to be attacking player one with the player two account so how this is going to work is when this part over here touch this touches this player and it detects a humanoid then they're going to lose 10 health so if we go touch them with the part you're able to see they just went and lost 10 health and now slowly but surely they also do regen because that's the standard roblox studio or roblox script that regen the player each time so it will take us a little bit of time to actually go and kill the player here but after some time keep in mind we also added a wait time so every 0.5 seconds we are only then able to to hurt them again so each time a humanoid is detected in this part then they are going to lose 10 health and as you guys can see we've just gone and killed the player there and then they have just gone and respawned and then we're able to go and you know attack the get attack them again and make them make them die and respawn if you guys are a little bit lost you don't really know what you're doing and you are needing some assistance feel free to create a ticket in my Discord server and we will happily help you out. But in a way guys, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell so you never miss another upload. And if you really did enjoy, please do consider liking the video also, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.